I'd love that. Two honorary scousers. Very good. And look, from turning up and being the only female goalkeeper that day to having three million young girls playing football now in this country. Look, it's International Women's Day. I would like to have a really honest conversation, right, that when you're a woman and you hear this conversation and you see all these big businesses tweeting how great they are and how they protect their female workers and how proud they are, like, what do you both think? Do you see the progress or do you still see how far we have to go? I certainly see the progress. I feel like, you know, certainly in our sport, uh, how far it's come. I think it's certainly in the media, the opportunity that I've been given today and look, myself and probably other people looking in will see it as a tick box. And I know that it's partly a tick box, but I also know it's a massive opportunity for me to showcase what I actually know about the game and how I can talk about the game and that the viewers can have their opinion of that. I think without there being tick boxes for people, where does the opportunity come from? So I, look, I certainly think that in terms of women, whether it be in sport or in business, I certainly think it's growing. But it's going to take time. I don't think it happens overnight. I think we've seen the growth, but it's a slow growth. Mm. And we have to be patient with that. This thing about ticking boxes is interesting, because let's just be absolutely frank, right? It doesn't matter who it is sitting in this studio. If you don't put your work in and you're no good, you go. Yeah, and that should really be the best judgment of who is the best person for the job is the meritocracy. Is if you do your work and you know what you're talking about, then you know you, you you'd be the person who you would choose for whatever job that is. And uh, you know, hopefully, we're getting more towards. That. I agree with Farah. You know, things have changed, things have progressed, and it might be quotas, it might be tokenism, it might be. Op but it's seen for me as an opportunity. And you get out there and you get to take the opportunity because not only does it then potentially open doors for you personally, but it opens doors for other people who look like you, you know, which in essence are females in the footballing world. So we have a duty when we're presented with these opportunities to do our very, very best to ensure that A, people know and can understand that we know what we're talking about, but B, that generally female footballers got 172 caps for the country will know what they're talking about. You know, we're talking about w w watching the games and, and, and stuff like that. And I always think that, is there a big difference between the two games? I'd like to understand from your perspective, even when you're watching them doing punditry, is there a difference watching them doing the punditry on a men's game compared to a women's game? Yeah, I mean, the, the speed of the men's and the women's games, absolutely, there, there is a difference. But if you also think that women's football has been professional for three years, and we, off air, we were talking about some of the differences, uh, Farry talking about some of the, the pay structures, the resources, the finances that go into men's football compared to women's football, all the way from the very, very youth and the coaches, um, all the way to senior football. So it's changing women's football for the better but it's still a million miles off the resources and infrastructure that men's football has. No, look, look, I agree. I think that we, you, you tend to ask a female footballer the differences and the only one that females want to talk about is the speed and you know, power and strength within the game are the differences. I certainly think that the golf in, in the technical ability is there. It's, it's massive between the men's and the women's game. I think the technical, I think, sorry, the tactical, I think, look, females know the game. I think tactically they're very astute. I think they do their homework, they, they analyse games really well. But we're so far behind in terms of the development of young players and the coaches at the very bottom of our game, in grassroots or in, in academies, to really get these young females technically better. And so what happens is that they go through the whole academy not really concentrating on the de technical detail and they get to a, a senior level and a, and a class as professional. But they've got so much making up to do with the te technical and side is this of the resources. Down to resources, yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. Down to well, yeah. I mean, I can give an example of my, as in the pay, look, and I, I don't know the exact amount of a, a male academy coach at under 10s, but it's, it's around the 30, 40k a year. Now, myself as an, a, an academy coach at the, at, at, in the women's game, it's 6k a year. So you're coaching at the same level wow. as in, as in the, the age like of you the kid. Angry. It doesn't because I'm passionate about football and I'm, I'm passionate to get these girls <laughs> you better. You should still be learn. rewarded, though. Yeah, of course it should be. Is that, is, that, is that pay structure and the difference of disparity between both, is that... Who sets that? Is that paid by the FA or the Premier League or, or who is it that pays that? I, know, I don't know where the men's... I'm not sure the men's academy. I know in the female one, I know that the, the FA help fund the academies and the structure of that and I know it's, it's going to change slightly in the coming years or the, there's talk of it changing. But I think that's the problem is that the, the young girls, they only train twice a week. And they train sometimes with, you know, people that love football, but facilitate and don't coach. And there's a difference between coaching and facilitating. You know, all of us can turn up to a session, put a session on, facilitate the kids, the, the young girls and, and, and whatever. But there's a coach that will come along and try and improve every individual. And whether that be, you, you know, mentally, physically, technically, tactically, that's what a coach will do. And that's what in, in, in the girls' academy isn't happening at the minute. There's a big difference. There yeah. is a big difference. But, between but go back 10 years, coaches. 10 years ago, 
probably most of the senior football coaches in women's football were part-time or were volunteers. Mm -hmm. And that's at senior football. Yeah. So certainly take that down to academies. So I agree, it's not where it should be, but we have made progress. Mm. Oh, yeah, there's definitely progress. A long way to go, though. Absolutely. And the big problem is people judge the women's game with no empathy or understanding. They compare it to the men's game, but that single answer about resources um, sums up how much further there is still to go. But thanks for sharing that with us. And happy International Women's Day to the <laughs> both of you. And let's just remember how much further all of us have got to go. Um, right, there's another